Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off with, um, in this case, a model from Google SketchUp converted into a NURBS geometry with the drape function. Um, we can also use the height field uh, model. In this case, I'm going to use the, um, the drape model because the dimensions are still somewhat accurate. And uh, just for the point of this exercise, I want to show you how to make a scale model with, with relatively accurate dimensions. So again, this is the um, this is the drape geometry from um, the SketchUp model, and I can measure the distances here uh, by typing distance or just d if you're using uh, the aliases I created. Um, so the relative distance here, 3.1 million millimeters, which is about 3.1 kilometers, um, probably about the same in this direction. 3.4. So the point of this exercise is we're going to scale this down to a, uh, a size that's suitable for laser cutting and for our, our model which is going to be 200 millimeters square. So the first thing I want to do is um, create a rectangle, specifically a square, to represent that geometry. Uh, so let me just type in the command line type rectangle and the first corner of the rectangle, what it's asking for in the command line, 0, 0, we're going to do it right at the origin. In the other corner, 200, 200. Um, I can type S-E-L-L-A-S-T, which is select the last geometry I created, because I can't really see it from the viewport. You can see this tiny little yellow dot is selected, so it's very, very small um, in comparison to the existing geometry. So I need to figure out a decent scale to scale this topography down to fit into this uh, square that I just drew. And so going from kilometer to millimeter I can approximate a scale of about um, 1 to 10,000 in this case let's say. Um, so I'm going to type scale or SS in the shortcuts it's asking for the origin point, which I can just use 0, 0. Um, you can scale from anywhere in the model and it will just scale relative to that point. So 0, 0. In the scale factor, I want to use 0 0.0001, which will scale to 1 ten thousandth uh, of the original size. Now if I again type SEL LAST, it says one surface add to selection, and then if I do zoom or just Z um, with the aliases, it'll go to zoom selected. If I wasn't using the aliases, um, I would have to type zoom and then uh, click selected here. Um, so now I can see that this model has been scaled down to a size that is. Uh, more compatible with the 200 by 200 millimeters. So then I can just drag this over the model. I'm just going to trim out a part of it that I find particularly interesting and uh, that's going to be the model that I'll work with. So I know that this is still pretty accurate at a scale of 1 to 10,000. Another thing I would point out is when I just typed select last, um, if I just type SEL for select, you can see this whole drop down menu appears um, in the autocomplete menu, uh, which gives me dozens of different selection options. And this is something that's really nice about Rhino um, as, a, as opposed to other 3D modeling programs, um, is that you kind of glance through these. Um, you can specify almost any type of geometry. Um, if you ever have a, a more complicated model, you can select by color. You can select whether or not surfaces are closed or whether or not cl uh, curves are closed um, or open. You can select by name. Um, it's, and it's very intuitive. So if, if you get stuck or you get lost, um, you can just type the beginning of this. Just type SEL and, and you might find what you're looking for. 
Um, but moving on to back to this geometry, um, what I want to do here is so that I can uh, visually distinguish a little bit better is to start using different layers. Right now everything is on the default layer. Um, previously I had the Google Earth terrain which I no longer need so I can just select these three layers um, and delete them. Yes to all. And since these uh, layers are empty I can delete them as well. So I just have objects on the default layer at this point. Um, but I can click this button to create a new layer and let's call this um, boundary uh, representing the 200 by 200 boundary um, and I can click this to, to change the display color um, change it to magenta um, and now I need to actually set the rectangle the square to that layer which I do in properties and set the boundary. So now this is turned uh, pink magenta um, which is the color for this layer. You can also create a layer, a separate layer just to be more specific for the landscape. And let's make that aquamarine. And I'm going to turn off the surface isocurs. You can see this geometry has gotten a little bit uh, messy once it got scaled down, or a little bit jittery. I'm going to rebuild it using the same um, point coordinates, just type rebuild, or just RE. I rebuild with the same uh, point count. Um, it'll just relax the surface. And I can right click to repeat that command. Alright, it's a little bit better. Now, what I want to do is trim this landscape to fit the 200 by 200 millimeter boundary. And I'm going to do that just by clicking on the rectangle, the square, and first extruding it. Uh, I can just type E because that's my alias for, um, for extrude. You can see the, uh, the options here. I can extrude to a different direction, uh, which I can specify this way, which doesn't help me. Um, I can um, go into the front viewport and specify this vertical direction. So if I go to all four viewports. What it's doing now is also creating a cap, which I don't actually need. So I'm going to unclick cap or change that to no. But as you can see, the landscape also goes below. So I can click another feature, which is called both sides, to yes. So now it extrudes to both sides at the same time. So now I basically have a four sided poly surface, uh, which is an extrusion of the, uh, the original square. And it extruded to the default layer because that's the layer that I have checked. I could undo. If I check the boundary layer instead, repeat the command, it'll do the same thing on the boundary layer. I can then select this and type trim or just T and then click the, uh, the landscape outside and it's trimmed to the boundary of the surface. The other thing I could have done Without needing the, um, without needing to extrude, I could have skipped a step just by selecting the rectangle, and in the top viewport, um, 
directly typing trim. Even though this is just a curve, I can uh, make sure I have the option called Apparent Intersections uh, selected to Yes. And that will trim from the angle of the viewport the apparent intersections of the, uh, of the selected trim geometry. Okay, so either way, I now have a landscape. And one last thing I want to do is just to move this model so that everything is above the uh, z plane, the z equals zero plane. Again, if I go back to all four viewports, um, I can see from from the front just estimating um, how how high this is going. Now, if I just click and drag, I can move in that way, but it's not accurate. And it's um, it's going to go in an unspecified direction. I can hold Shift, and that will maintain um, a straight orthogonal direction. Or I can type Move, and again, holding Shift will maintain it is moved perpendicular to the surface. Move it down just a little bit. Back up. So it's just pretty close to uh, the lowest point touching the zero zero line. Okay, so now we've scaled our model and um, trimmed appropriately and we have a surface that we can work with.